by Hippolyta. Our nuptial hour draws on apace. All happy days bring in another moon. But do me thinks how slow this old moon wanes. She lingers my desires. For days will quickly steep themselves in night. For nights will quickly dream away the time. And then the moon, like to a silver bow you bent in heaven, shall behold the nights of our solemnities. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword. I won thy love doing thee injuries. But I will wed thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with revelry. Happy be Theseus. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come I with complaint against my child. My daughter, Hermia, Stand forth, Demetrius. This man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. This man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchange love tokens with my child. Cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart, turned her obedience, which is due to me. Stubborn harshness. Be it so she will not hear consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege, as she is mine. I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman or to her death. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid. To you, your father should be as a god. Demetrius. Worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. I would my father looked with my eyes. I do entreat your pardon. I know not by what power I am made bold. But I beseech you the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. To abjure forever the society of men. Fair Hermia, question your desires. Know of your youth, examine well your blood. Whether if you yield not to your father's choice, you shall endure the livery of a nun be a barren sister or your life, chanting faint hymns to the cold, fruitless moon. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I will yield my virgin patent up. Take time to pause, and by the next new moon, upon that day, either to, to wed Demetrius as he would, or to protest for I austerity and single life. Relent, sweet Hermia, and my son. Yield thy crazy title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. You marry him. Oh, oh, scornful Lysander. True, he hath my love. <laughs> and what is mine, my love shall render him. I must well derive as he. As well possessed, my love is more than his. I'm beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should not I then prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'll avouch it to his head. Made love to Helena, and she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes in idolatry upon this spotted and inconstant man. I must confess that I have heard so much. For you, fair Hermia, would you arm yourself to fit the fancies of your father's will? What else law yields you up to a vow of single life? Now come, my Hippolyta, what cheer, my love? Demetrius and Aegeus, go along. With duty and desire, we follow you. How now, my love? Why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? Be like for want of rain, which I could well team them from the tempest of my eyes. By me, for aught that I could ever read, the course of true love never did run smooth. Oh, cross! Too high to be enthralled to loathe! Oh, spite! Too old to be begged to on all hell! To choose love by another's eyes! Hear me, Hermia, I have a widowed aunt, a dowager, of great revenue, and she hath no child, and she respects me as her only son. Then may I marry thee, and to that place the Lord cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me then, steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood, a league without the town, there will I marry thee. My good Lysander, 
I swear to thee, by Cupid's strongest foe, by all the vows that ever men have broke, in number more than ever women spoke, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. He promised, love, look, here's Helena. Godspeed, fair Helena, with her eye! Oh, fair! Call you me fair. That fair again, I'm say. Demetrius loves your fair. Oh, happy fair. Your eyes are low stars, and whose tongue sweet air, more twin than a lark to shepherds here. Um, teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that's your frown to teach my smile such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hated me. His fallen honor is no fault of mine. None but your beauty, now without fault be mine. Take comfort, and he no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Tell them to you our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night we have devised a steel. And in the wood, for often you and I upon faint for first beds when we're to lie, there my Lysander and myself shall meet. The same few friends and strange companies. There was we played by love, pray not for us. And good luck for Anthony Rye Demetrius. Keep wide, Lysander. I will, my love. Helena, adieu, as you and him, Demetrius, dote on you. How happy some or other some can be. I am thought as fair as she, but what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. For love is not with the eyes, but with the mind. He hailed down oaths that he was only mine. Is all our company here? You were best to call them generally. 
man by man, according to the script. Ah. Oh. Here is the scroll of every man's name to play now in to live before the Duke and Duchess on his wedding day at night. First good Peter Quince. Call forth your actors by the scroll. Masters, spread yourselves. Answer as I call you. Nick Bottom, the weaver. Ready, name what pass I am for, and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover, or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself, most gallant for love. That shall ask some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. I will condole in some measure. Now name the rest of the players. Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. Flute, you must take Thisbe on you. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight? It is the lady that Pyramus must love. Nay, Faith, let me not play a woman. Oh, that's all one. You shall play to the mask, and you may speak as small as you will. And I may hide my face. Let me play Thisbe too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Thisbe, Thisbe. Ah, Pyramus, lover, dear. No, no, you must play Pyramus and flute. You, Thisbe. Well, proceed. Robin Starveling, the tailor. Here, Peter Quint. Robin Starveling, you must play Thisbe's mother. Tom Snap, the tinker. Here, Peter Quint. You, Pyramus, father. Myself, Thisbe's father. Snug the joiner. You, the lion's part. And I hope, here is a play fitted. Have you the lion's Pray you, if it be, pivot me, for I am slow study. You may do it extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. Let me play the lion too. I will roar, that I will do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar, that I will make the duke say, Let him roar again. Let him roar again. And you should do it too terribly. You would fright the duchess and the ladies, but they would shriek. And that were enough to hang us all. That would hang us every mother's son. I will aggravate my voice, so that I will roar you as gently as any sucking dove. You can play no part but Pyramus. For Pyramus is a sweet-faced man, a proper man, as one shall see in a summer's day, a most lovely, gentleman-like man. Therefore, you must needs play Pyramus. Well, I will undertake it. Masters, here are your parts, and I am to entreat you request you, and desire you, to con them by tomorrow night, and meet me in the woods, a mile without town. There, by moonlight, we shall rehearse. For if we meet in the city, we shall be dogged with company, and our devices known. I pray you, fail me not. We will meet, and there we may rehearse, most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect, adieu. <laughs> <laughs> How now, spirit? With the what are you? Over hill? Over dale? Through bush? Through briar? I do wonder everywhere. And I serve the fairy queen. I must bring see some dewdrops here and hang a pearl in every castle's ear. I'll be gone. Our queen and all our elves. Come here and on. The king doth keep his revels here tonight. Take heed the queen, come not within his sight. But over on his passing fell and rang. Was that she and her attendant hath a lovely boy? Stolen from an Indian king. And jealous over would have the child to trace the forest wild. But she perforce holds the lover boy, crowns him with flowers and makes him all her joy. Either a mistake, your shape him make him quite. Or else you are that shrew and knavish sprite called Robin Goodfellow. Are not you he that thrives the maidens of the villagery? Are not you he? Thou speaks aright. I am that merry wanderer of the night. I jest at Oberon and make him smile. But room, fairy, here comes Oberon. And here my mistress. With that he were gone. Still met by moonlight, proud Tanya. What? Jealous Oberon? Fairies, skip past. 
I have forsworn his bed and company. Terry, rash wanton, am I not thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. Why art thou here? Come from the farthest steep of India, but that pursuit the bounce of without an Amazon or a busking office and your royal love. To Theseus must be ready, when you come to give that joy and prosperity. How comes thou thus for shame, Titania? Glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus? These are the forgeries of jealousy, and never since the middle summer spring met we on hill in dale, forest, or mead. For with thy brawls thou hast disturbed thy sport. And the same progeny of evil comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and origin. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairy land buys not the child of me. His mother was a votaress of my order, but she, being mortal of that boy, did die. And for her sake, do I rear up her boy. For her sake, I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Be gentle after Theseus' wedding day, if you will pay for me. Dance an hour round and see our moonlight revels. Go with us. If not, shun me. Now spare your horns. Give me that boy, and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies, away. We shall chide downright if I longer step. Well, go thy way. Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle puck, come here. Thou rememberest since I once sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back uttering such delight and harmonious breath that the rude seas grew civil at her song. Uh, I remember. That very moment I saw, but thou couldst not, flying between the cold moon and the earth, uh, Cupid, all arm. A certain aim he took and loosened his love shaft smartly from his bow. It marked I where the bolt of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower, before milk white, now purple. With love's wound. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids lay will make all man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb. I'll put a girdle around about the earth in forty minutes. Once this juice thou art to Tanya when she is asleep, and lay the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing she wakingly looks upon, be it on lion, bear, or wolf, or bull, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And ere I take this charm off her sight, as I can take it with another herb. I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible, and I shall overhear their confidence. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? The one I'll slay, the other slayeth me. Thou toss me, they will stone me unto this wood. Hence, get thee gone, and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant. Leave you your power to join. I will have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not in plainest truth tell you? I do not, nor I cannot love you. And even for that, do I love you the more? Tempt not too much the <laughs> hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. I will not stay thy questions. Let me go. Or, if thou follow me, do not believe that I shall do thee mischief. Do me mischief! Fight, Demetrius! Your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. I cannot fight for love as men may do. 
we should be wooed, and we're not made to woo. I'll follow thee. Fare thee well, nymphs. Ere he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. Hast thou the flower there? Welcome, wanderer. I. There it is. I pray thee, give it me. And no bank where the wild time blows, where the ox slips and nodding violet grows, quite over canopied with luscious wood vine, with sweet musk roses in the Edelman time. There sleeps Titania, some time of the night lulled in these flowers with dancers in delight. And with the juice of this I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it and seek through this grove a sweet lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the garments he hath on. Affected with care that he may prove more fond of her than she upon her love. And look thou meet me ere the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord, your servant shall do so. Dirty ground. 
cold. She does not like it as lack love, this chill courtesy. Shell, upon these eyes I throw, or the power this charm doth owe. Say, though thou kill me, sweet Demetrius. I charge thee hence, and do not haunt me thus. Oh, wilt thou darkling leave me? Do not so. Stay, on thy peril, I alone will go. Oh, I am out of breath in this fond chase. The more my prayer, the lesser is my grace. Happy is Hermia, wheresoever she lies, for she hath blessed and attractive eyes. How came her eyes so bright? Not with salt tears. If so, mine are often a wash to then hers. But who is here? Well, I stand uh, <laughs> on the ground. Dead. Or asleep. Lysander. Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake. And run through fire, I will for thy sweet sake. Transparent Helen, a nature shows dark, and through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? Ah, oh, bitter word is that vile name to perish on my sword. Do not say so. Lysander, say it is not so. What though he love your Hermia? Lord, what though? Hermia still loves you. Be content. Content with Hermia? No, I do repent the tedious minutes I with her have spent. Not Hermia, but Helena I love. Who will not trade a raven for a dove? Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When? At your hands did I deserve this scorn. It's not enough, it's not enough, young man, that I did never, no, nor never can, deserve a sweet look from Demetrius' eye. Yet you must flout my insufficiency. Well, fare you well. Perforce I must confess, I thought you a lord of more true gentleness. She sees not Hermia. Hermia, sleep thou there, and never mayst thou come thy sand and near. I may, for pity, what a dream was here. Lysander, look how I do quake with fear. Lysander? What? Removed? Lysander? Lord! Are we all met? Ah, here's the Marvale's convenient place for our rehearsal. This green plot shall be our stage. We will do it in action as we will do it before the Duke. Peter Quince. What sayest thou, Fully Bonham? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. By a lake and Apollo's fear. I believe we must leave the killing out when all is done. Not a whit. I have advice to make all well. Write me a prologue, and let the prologue seem to say, We shall do no harm with our swords, and that Pyramus is not killed indeed, and for the more better assurance. Tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom, the weaver. This will put them out of fear. Well, we will have such a prologue. <clears throat> will the ladies not be afeard of the lion? I fear it. I promise you. Masters, you ought to consider with yourselves. To bring in a lion amongst ladies is the most dreadful thing. Therefore, another prologue must tell that he's not a lion. Nay, you must name his name, and half his face must be seen through the lion's neck. And he must speak through, saying thus or to the same effect. Ladies, or fair ladies, I would wish you, or I would request you, or I would entreat you, not to fear, not to tremble, my life for yours. If you think I come hither as a lion, it were pity of my life. No, I am no such thing. I am a man as other men are. Tell them plainly, he is snug the joint. Well, it shall be so, but there's two hard things, that is. To bring the moonlight into a chamber for, you know, Pyramus and Thisbe meet by moonlight. Stop the moon shine the night we play our play. A calendar, a calendar. Look at the almanac. Find out moonshine. Find out moonshine. Yes, it doth shine that night. 
Why then may you leave a window open, and the moon may shine in? Then there is another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber, for Pyramus of Thisbe says the story did talk through the chink of a wall. You can never bring in a wall. What say you, Bottom? Some man or other must present wall. And let him have some loam, or some plaster, or some rough cast about him to signify wall. And let him hold his fingers thus, and through that cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. If that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down, every mother's son, and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin. When you have spoken your speech, enter into that break, and so everyone according to his cue. What hempen homespuns have we swaggering here? Send in the cradle of the fairy queen. Speak, Pyramus, Thisbe, stand forth. Thisbe, the flowers of odious savours. Odours, oh, odours. Odours savours sweet, so hath thy breath. My dearest Thisbe, dear, but hark, a voice, stay thou but here a while, and by and by wilt be here. A stranger pyramus than ever played here. Must I speak now? Ay, Mary, must you, for he goes but to see a noise he has heard, and is to come again. Most radiant Eremus, most lily-white of hue, I'll meet thee, Eremus, at Minnie's door. Ninus, too, man, why he must not speak that yet. That who answers a pyramus, you speak all your part at once, Cues and all. Pyramus, enter! Your cue is past. Ready! 
And I. And I. And I. Where and shall we go? go? Be kind and courteous with this gentleman. Hop in his walks and gamble in his eyes. Feed him with apricots and dewberries. With purple grapes, green figs and mulberries. The honey bags steal from the humble bees. Not to him else. And do him courtesy. Hail mortal. Hail. 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 I cry your worship's mercy. Heartily, I beseech your worship's name. Cobweb! Good master Cobweb, I desire your more acquaintance. If I cut my finger, I shall make bold with you your name, honest gentleman. Peas Blossom! Good master Peas Blossom, I desire your more acquaintance too. Your name, I beseech you, sir. Mustard Seed. Good master Mustard Seed, I promise you your kindred had made my eyes water. And <laughs> I desire your more acquaintance, good Master Mustard Seed. Come, wait upon him, lead him to my bower. <laughs> I wonder to Tanya be awakened. If so, what was it the next came in her eye? In extremity. Ah, here's my messenger. How now, mad spirit? My mistress of the monster is in love. Ooh. Near to her close and consecrated bower, while she was in her dull and sleeping hour, a girl patches were met together to rehearse a play intended for great Theseus' natural death. The shallowest thick skin of that barren sort, who Kira was presented in their sport. Took his scene and entered in a break. When I did him at this advantage take, and as this no life being set on his head, so at his sight away his fellows fly. When in that moment so it came to pass, the time you wait and straight away loved an ass. This falls out better than I could devise. But hast thou yet latched his eyes with the love juice, as I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping. The woman by his side, that when he went off, thought she must be I. Stand close. This is the same. This is the woman, but not this the man. Oh, why rebuke you him that loves you so? Now I am but shy, that I should use thee worse. Now I fear hast given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain my sand in his sleep, kill me too. But he has stolen away from sleeping Hermia. It cannot be, but thou hast murdered him. So should the murdered look, so dead, so grim. So should the murdered look. And so should I, pierced through the heart with your stern cruelty. Where is he? Ah, uh, good Demetrius, wilt thou give him me? And if I could, what should I get there for? A privilege never to see me more. There is no following her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, for a while I will remain. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite and laid the love juice on some Rule of sight! About the wood, go swifter than the wind, and Helena look thou fine or fancy sick. She is in pale of cheer, with sighs of love that cost the fresh blood dear. By some illusion, see thou bring her here. How charm his eyes again she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go. Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery, sink in apple of his eye. Oh. Captain of our fairy band, Helena is here at hand, and the youth mistook by me, pleading for a lover's fee. Stand aside, the noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Why should you think that I should wound scorn? Scorn and derision never come into his look. I pal, I weep. You do advance your cunning more and more. These vows are Hermia's. Will you give her I know judgment went to her, I swore. No, not in my mind. Now will you give her all? Demetrius loves her, he loves not you. Oh, Helena! <laughs> Goddess! <laughs> perfect, divine! To what my love shall I compare thine eye? Oh, let me kiss this princess of pure white, this seal of bliss! Oh, Spike! Oh, how I see you all are meant to 
set against me for your merriment. If you were men as men you are in show, you would not use such a gentle lady so. You are both rivals and love Hermia. And now both rivals to mock Helena. You are unkind, Demetrius, be not so. For you love Hermia, this you know I know. With all good will, with all my heart, and Hermia's love, I yield you up my part. And yours of Helena, to me bequeath, who I do love and will do till my death. Never did mockers waste more idle breath. Lysander, keep thy Hermia, I will none. If e'er I loved her, all that love is gone. My heart to Helen is at home returned, there to remain. Helen, it is not so. Look, where thy love comes, yonder is thy dear. Thou art not by mine eye. I said of found, mine ear I thank it brought me to thy sound, but why unkindly didst thou leave me so? Why should he stay whom love doth press to go? What love could press Lysander from my side? Lysander's love thou would not let him bide. Why seeks thou me? Could not this make thee know the hate I bear thee made me leave thee so? You speak not as you think, it cannot be. Why, uh, she is one of this confederacy? Now I have to see that they have conjoined all three to fashion this false war in spite of me. Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid, have you conspired, haven't you these contrived to bait me in this foul derision? Will you rent our ancient love as son to join with men in scorning your poor friend? Tis not friendly, tis not maidenly. Our sex, as well as I may chide you for it, Though I alone do feel the injury. I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems that you scorn me. Have you not said Lysander as in scorn to follow me and praise my eyes and face? And made your other love, Demetrius, who e'en but now did spur me with his foot to call me goddess. Nymph, divine and rare, precious, celestial, wherefore speaks this to her he hates? And wherefore doth Lysander deny your love, so rich within his soul, to tend and meet for sooth affection? But by your setting on, but by your consent, this you should pity rather than despise. I understand not what you mean by this. Counterfeit sad looks make mouths upon me when I turn my back. Hold the sweet jest up. If you had any pity, grace, or manners, you would not make me such an argument. But fare ye well, tis partly my own fault. Stay, gentle Helena, hear my excuse. My love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, excellent. Sweet, do not scorn her so. If she cannot entreat, I can compel. Thou canst compel no more than she entreat. Thy threats have no more strength than her weak prayers. Helen, I love thee by my life, I do. I say I love thee more than he can do. Let us say so with joy and prove it too. Quick, come. I send her where to tends all this. Hang on, thou cast, thou burr. Vile thing, let loose, I'll shake thee from me like a serpent. Why are you grown so rude? What change is this? Sweet love. Thy love. Thou hast hated potion, learned medicine, hence. Do you not jest? Yes. Sooth and so to you. Demetrius, I'll keep my word with thee. I would I had your bond, for I perceive a weak bond holds you. I'll not trust your word. What? Shall I strike her, hurt her, kill her dead? Although I hate her, I will not harm her so. What? Can you do me greater harm than hate? Am not I Hermia, and not you Lysander? I am as fair now as I was erewhile. Since night you loved me, yet since night you left me. Why then you left me in earnest? I by my life never did desire to see thee more. Be certain, tis nothing sure. Tis no just no do hate thee and love Helena. Oh me, you juggler, you canker boss, you thief of love! What, have you cut my night and stolen my little heart from him? Fine. Have you no modesty, no maiden shame, no touch of bashfulness? What? Will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Fire. Fire, you counterfeit, you puppet! You puppet. puppet! Why so? Aye, that's where goes the game. Now I perceive she hath made compare between our statures. She hath urged her height. And I have grown so high in his esteem because I am so dwarfish and so low. How low am I, thou painted maypole? 
Steak. Hello. I am not yet so low, but that my nails can reach to thine eyes. Pray you, gentlemen, don't you mock me. Let her not hurt me. Let her not strike me. You may think that because she is something lower than myself that I can match her. Lower? Hark again! Good, good Hermia! Do not be so bitter with me. I evermore did love you. Hermia did ever keep your counsels, never wronged you. Save that in love unto Demetrius. I told him of your stealth into this wood. He followed you. For love I followed him. But he hath chid me hence and threatened me. And now I will bear my folly back and follow you no more. Let me go. You see how simple and how fond I am. Why get you gone? Who is that because you? The foolish heart that I leave here behind. What with my sandals? With Demetrius. Be not afraid she shall not harm thee, Helena. No, sir, she shall not, though you take her place. Oh, when she is angry, she is keen and true. She was a vixen when she went to school, and though she be but little, she is fierce. Little? Again, nothing but low and little. Why will you suffer her to plow me thus? Let me come to her. Get gone, you dwarf, you minimus, you bee, you ankle. Let her alone. Now she halts me not. Follow, now go with thee, cheek by jowl. Stay in your cursed company. Your hands than mine are quicker for a fray, but my legs are longer though to run away. Speak thou now. Here, villain. Drawn and ready. Where art thou? I'll be with thee straight. Follow me then to play the ground. Lysander! Speak again! Thou runaway! Thou coward! Speak! In some bush? Where dost thou hide thy head? Thou coward! Art thou bragging to the stars, telling the bushes that thou lookst for wars, and wilt not come? Come, recreant! Come, thou child! I'll whip thee with a rod. He has defiled the jaws of sword on thee. Yea, art thou there? Follow my voice, which I no man would hear. He goes before me and still dares me on. When I come away, he calls and he is gone. The villain is much lighter healed than I. I followed fast, but faster did he fly. Thus fallen am I in dark and even way. He will rest me. 
Come, thou gentle day, for if but once I show me thy grey light, I'll find Demetrius and revenge the spite. Ha ha ha, coward! Why comest thou not? Thou runst before me, shifting every place. Where art thou now? Come hither. I am here. If ever I thy face by daylight see. Now go thy way. Faintness constraineth me to measure out my length upon this cold bed. Oh, weary night, oh, long and tedious night. Advance thy hour, and steal me a laugh from my own company. Oh, yet but three. Come one more, two of both kinds makes up four. Here she comes, cursed and sad, Cupid is a knavish lad, thus to make poor females mad. Never so weary, never so in woe, bedabbled with the dew and torn with briars. I can no further crawl, no further go. My legs can keep no pace with my desires. Here will I rest me till the break of day. Heaven's shield, Lysander, if they need a prey. <laughs> On the ground, sleep sound. I'll apply to your eye, gentle lover, remedy. When thou wakest, thou takest true delight in the sight of thy former lady's eye. In the country for her known, let every man to take his own. In your waking, shall be shown. Jack shall have Jill, Mort shall get ill. The man shall have his mare again, and all. Peas Blossom. Here. Scratch my head, Peas Blossom. Where's Monsieur Cobweb? Ready. Monsieur Cobweb, get you your weapons in your hands and kill for me a red-hipped humblebee on the top of a thistle. And good Monsieur, bring me the honey bag. Where's the Monsieur Mustard Seed? Ready. What's your will? Nothing good, Monsieur, but to help Cavalry Cobweb to scratch. I must to the barbers, Monsieur. For me thinks I'm marvellous hairy about the face. Well, say, sweet love, <laughs> what thou desirest to eat? Truly, a peck of provender. I could munch your good dry oats. Me thinks I have a great desire to a bottle of hay. Good hay, sweet hay, hath no feather. I am a venturous fairy that shall seek the screws hoard and fetch thee new nuts. I'd rather have a handful or two of dry peas. But I pray you, let none of your people stir me. I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. Sleep thou, and I will wind thee in my arms. Fairies, be gone, and be always away. Oh, how I love thee, how I dote on thee. I dote thou, my dear pity. For she is hairy temples that have rounded with a coronet of fresh and fragrant flowers. And now I have the boy, I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eye. Beest thou wast wont to be, seest thou wast wont to see. Diane's bud, 
Oh, a Cupid's flower hath such force and blessed power. Now, my Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. <sighs> my Oberon! What visions have I seen? Methought I was enamoured of an ass. There lies your love. How came these things to pass? Oh, how mine eyes do load this visage now. Now when thou wakes with thine full eyes peep. Come, my queen, take hands with me, and rock the ground whereon these sleepers be. Now thou and I are new in amity, and tomorrow will midnight solemnly dance in Duke Theseus' house triumphantly. Fairy king, attend and mark. I do hear the morning lark. Now, my queen, in silence sad, trip we after that shade. We the globe can compass soon, swifter with the wandering moon. Come, my lord, and in our flight, tell me how it came this night. To I sleeping here was found with these mortals on the ground. But soft, what nymphs are these? When my cue comes, call me, and I will answer. My next is most fair Pyramus. I ho! Peter Quinn's fluke, the bell is mender. Snap, the tinker. Starling? God's my life. Stolen hence and left me asleep. I've had a most rare vision. I've had a dream. Past the wit of man to say what dream it was. <clears throat> man is but an ass if he go about to expound this dream. <clears throat> <clears throat> Methought I was. <clears throat> there is no man can tell what. <clears throat> Methought I was. I shall get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream. It shall be called Bottom's Dream, <clears throat> because it hath no bottom, and I shall sing it in the latter end of a play before the Duke. My lord, this is my daughter here asleep. And this Lysander, this Demetrius, is this Helena? I wonder if they're being here together. No doubt they rose early to observe the right of May, and in hearing our intent came in grace of our solemnity. But to speak, Aegeus, is this not the day that you give answer to a Hermia's choice? Oh, it is, my lord. Good morrow, friends! Pardon, my lord. I pray you all stand up! I know you two are rival enemies. How come this gentle concord in the world? I cannot truly say how I came to be here, but I came with Hermia hither. Enough. Enough, my lord. You have enough. I beg the law, the law, upon his head. They would have stolen away. They would, Demetrius thereby to have defeated you and me. You of your wife, and me of my consent. Of my consent that she should be your wife? My lord! Fair Helen told me of their stealth, and I in folly followed them. Fair Helen following me. Fair couples, you have fortunately met. Of this discourse we mortally hear anon. Aegeus, I will overbear your will. For in the temple by and by with us, his couple shall eternally be knit. We shall hold a feast with great solemnity. Come, my Apollo. These things seem small and undistinguishable, like mountains turning into clouds. Methinks I see things 
parts die, and everything seems double. Methinks I have found nature is like a jewel. I know. Lads, where are these hearts? Bottom, almost courageous day, almost happy hour. Masters, I am to discourse wonders, but ask me not what, for if I tell you, I will tell you everything, right as it fell out. Let us hear, sweet Bottom. Not a word of me, all that I will tell you is, the Duke hath dined. Meet presently at the palace, every man look o'er his part, for the short and the long years, our play is preferred. And most dear actors eat no onions nor garlic, for we are to utter sweet breath. And I do not doubt but to hear them say, it is a sweet comedy, no more words. Away, go away. Shaping fantasies apprehend more than cool reason ever comprehends. But all the stories of the night told over, and all their minds transfigured so together, strange and admirable. <laughs> Here come the lovers, full of joy and mirth. <laughs> now joy, gentle friends, now shall we enjoy the night. Call Philostrate. Here, mighty Theseus. What abridgment do you have for this evening? How shall, we, how shall we beguile the lazy time, if not with some delight? There is a brief. The battle with the centaurs to be sung by an Athenian eunuch to the harp. Will none of that. The riot of the tipsy Barcanals tearing the Thracian singer in their rage. That is an old device. The thrice three muses mourning the death of learning, late deceased in beggary. Not, not sorting for a nuptial ceremony. A tedious brief scene of young Pyramus and his love Thisbe, very tragical man. Merry and tragical, tedious and brief. A play there is, my lord, some ten words long, which is as brief as I have known a play. But by ten words, it is too long, which makes it tedious. <laughs> For in all the play, there is not one word at one play fitted. And tragical, my noble lord, it is. For Pyramus therein doth kill himself. Which, when I saw rehearse, I must confess, made mine eye water. But more merit is the passion of loud laughter never shed. What are they that do play? Hard handed men which never laboured in their minds till now. And we will hear it. No, my lord, it is not for you. I've heard it over, and it is nothing, nothing in the world. I will hear that play! Go, bring them in. I look not to see the wretched new scholar charged, and the duty in his service perishing. My gentle sweet, you shall 
see no such thing. He says they can do nothing in this kind. The kind do we to give them thanks for nothing. So please, Your Grace, the prologue is addressed. <laughs> If we offend, it is with our good will that you should think we come not to offend, but with good will to show our simple skill. That is the true beginning of our end. Woo! <laughs> the actors are at hand, and by their show, you shall know all that you are like to know. This man doth not speak upon points. Indeed, he hath played on his pug like a child on a recorder. A sound, but not in government. His speech was like a, like a tangled chain. Nothing impaired, but all disordered. Now who is next? Gentles, perchance, you wonder at this show. But wonder on, till truth make all things plain. This man is Pyramus, if you would know. <laughs> This beauteous lady, Ooh. this be a certain hover, <laughs> This man with line and rough cast doth present. Whoa! <laughs> that vile wall which did these lovers sunder, and through walls chink, poor souls, they are content to whisper. This man with lantern presenteth moonshine. <laughs> For if you know, by moonshine did these lovers think no school to meet at nine as two. There, oh. there to <laughs> oh. <laughs> this grisly beast. Oh, which lion hype by name? Oh. <laughs> The trusty Disney, coming first by night, did scare away, or rather, did a fright. <gasps> and as she fled, her mantle she did fall, which lion, vile with bloody mouth, did stain. <gasps> and on comes Pyramus, sweet youth and tall, and finds his trusty Thisbe's mantle slain. <gasps> Whereat with blade, with bloody blameful blade, he bravely broached his boiling bloody breast, and Thisbe, terrible, not for his shade, his dagger drew and died. Oh. <laughs> for all the rest, let lion, moonshine, wall, and mothers twain at large discourse while here they do remain. I wonder if the lion be to speak. My lord, one lion may when many asses do. In this same interlude, it doth before that I, once now by name, present a war. <laughs> and such a war as I would have you think if it had in it a cranny hole or chink through which the lovers, Pyramus and Thisbe, did whisper. Often, very secretly, this loam, this rough cast, and this stone doth show that I am that same wall. The truth is so, and this, the cranny it, which the fearful lovers. It is the wittiest partition that I have ever heard this call. <laughs> oh, grim lords, knights! O oh, knights with you so black! I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot. And thou, O oh, wall, O oh, sweet, O oh, lovely wall, that stands between her father's round and mine, Thou wall, O oh wall, O oh sweet and lovely wall, show me thy chink to blink through with mine eye. <laughs> <coughs> Thanks, courteous wall, but what see I? No thisbe do I see. O oh wicked wall, through whom I see no bliss, curse be thy stones for thus deceiving me. If the wall methinks being sensible, should curse again. No, in truth, sir, he should not. Deceiving me is Thisbe's cue. 
She is for ends now, and I inspire through the wall. Yonder, she comes. <laughs> oh, Paul, full often hast thou heard my moans for parting my fair Eremus and me, my cherry lips have often kissed thy stones. <laughs> I see a voice, now am I to the chink, to spy and I can hear my Thisbe's face. Thisbe! My love thou art, my love I think. Think what thou wilt, I am thy lover's grace. Oh, kiss me through the hole of this vile wall. <laughs> <laughs> I kissed the wall's hole, not your lips at all. Wilt thou at Nitty's tomb make me straightway? I come without delay. And thus have I, wall, my part discharged so, and wall away doth go. <laughs> now is the mural down between the new names. <coughs> The best in this kind are about shadows. It must be your imagination then, and not theirs. You ladies, you whose gentle hearts do fear, the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on floor, we now perchance both quake and tremble here, when lions rub in wildest rage of war, know that I am snug the joiner, and the lion fell. A very gentle beast of good conscience. But now let us listen to the moon. This lantern doth the horned moon present. He should have worn the horns on his head. His he is no crescent, and his horns are invisible within the circumference. This lantern doth the horned moon present. Myself, the man in the moon, do seem to be. This is the greatest error of the all. If why isn't he not in the lanthorn, if he is the man in the moon? I am aware of this moon, would he would change. It appears by a small light of discretion, but let us state the time. Now proceed, moon. All I have to say is to tell you, lanthorn is the moon, I, the man in the moon. <laughs> Shining now so bright, for by thy gracious, golden, glittering gleams, I trust to take of truest Thisbe sight. Beshrew my heart, but I pity the man. <laughs> oh, wherefore, nature, didst thou lion's frame, since lion vile hath here? The flower of my dear. Come, tears confound, outsword and wound the pack of Pyramus. Thus die I, thus, thus, thus. Now I am dead, now I am fled. My soul is in the sky. Tongue, lose thy light. Moon, Take thy flight, now die, 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 die! No die but an ace for him, for well, he's but one. Less than an ace, for he is dead, he is nothing. With the help of a surgeon he might yet recover, and prove an ass. Good, our chance when Shani is gone, for this he comes back and finds her lover. She shall find her lover through starlight. She hath already spied him with those sweet eyes. Asleep, my love? What? Dead, my dove? Oh, Pyramus, arise! Speak, speak! Oh, I dare, dare? A tomb must cover thy sweet eyes. These lily lips, this cherry nose, these yellow cowslip cheeks. Are gone! Are gone! Lovers make moan. Come, oh, Come, oh, trusty sword! Come, flay my breast in fruit! <laughs> and farewell, friends! Thus this be ends! Adieu, adieu, adieu!
Lion and Lion. I just have to bury the dead lion. And wall too. No. I assure you, the wall is down that part of their fathers. Oh, yes. Where be the mad burgo mask?